guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. Happy to have you here. Uh, a video a couple days ago, somebody suggested Nogdar the Headhunter in Frenzy. And I've never seen anything so incredible in this game, man. These are my favorite type of videos to make here on the channel. Taking an unpopular and really crappy champion, putting them in unpopular and really crappy artifacts. I say that with quotation uh, fingers up. And, you know, madness, chaos ensues, right? So let's take a look at why Nogdar the Headhunter, probably the worst reviews out of any legendary champion. We all know reviews mean absolutely nothing in this game. Nogdar the Headhunter. I actually really like this guy, man. I really do. He's not he's not an S-tier champion. He's not the best champion in the game, but he's really fun to play. And I don't know about you guys, but I play games to have fun. Crazy stuff, I know. Mind blowing. On its A1, attacks one enemy, heals his champion by 10% of their max HP, grants an extra turn if the attack kills an enemy. Very hard hitting A1. A2, attacks all enemies, I think around 3.7 multiplier, similar to like Thylesia. Uh, attacks all enemies after attacking. This champion sacrifices HP equal to 50% of his max HP, plays some continuous heals on him. Well, sacrificing HP just so happens to synergize beautifully with a Frenzy set. Plus 10% turn meter for every 5% HP lost. For every 5%. That's pretty crazy. So basically, we can get sometimes a full turn meter uh, on these abilities. Check out this one. Sacrifice HP equal to 50% of this target's max HP again. And then equalizes HP levels with a target enemy. The HP levels will both be brought down to the level of the lowest HP. So we're sacrificing more HP and then bringing our HP even more down. Again, full turn meter sometimes off of the A3. So he's just going again and again. Again and again and again like the energizer, bu energizer bunny that Nogdar the headhunter is in a frenzy set and you might be saying dude he's sacrificing a lot of HP Ash sounds like he's just gonna be dead well that brings me to his passive revives a champion with 50% HP and a 50% turn meter when killed if all other allies are alive so all you gotta do is make sure your teammates don't die and boom voila he's back alive and in action again with a half turn meter. So, uh, mastery is real quick on this champion. I went with my favorite PvP arena build, guys. You guys can see here, Retribution, Deterrence, and Helm Smasher. I also love Ruthless Ambush and Opportunist. You get an extra 20% total damage. Let me move back over here. 20% extra damage, 8 from here, and uh, 12 from here if you have a Soul of the Drakes, a Ninja, uh, in my case, a Prince Kaimar going before your arena nuker, and CCing, Stunning, Sleep, Feed, Fear, true fear or freeze on the enemy team so there's a lot of options in that regard yoshi the drunkard is another great option for the fear anyway guys those are the masteries in terms of the artifacts again frenzy set man this is the best set for anywhere in the game on nogdar the headhunter this is don't you dare don't you dare just really cool it's a really cool set so I went crit damage on the gauntlets, I went attack percentage on the chest, I went speed on the boots, I went attack, I went crit damage, and I went attack on the banner. Now his damage, I, I, you will see on the A2 here, it does say it scales on HP as well. Uh, however, the multipliers under the hood, I could not find any information on HP. So what I did before the video, I put an HP ring on him and I put an HP percentage chest on him and so I tried to see if I noticed any damage differential. And to be honest with you, the damage was a little bit less. So I'm going with attack and I'm ignoring that HP. Other than that, total stats are, uh, I had some good frenzy gear. I didn't have some good frenzy gear with really solid crit rate substats. So I'm a little bit shy of 100, but I do have a healthy amount of crit damage. I have a healthy the amount of speed at 203 and I have a lot of attack at 5100 on this champion uh, so again his damage is not going to be insane it's the fact that he is that energizer bunny in terms of going again and again and again and again and again which really makes his damage add up I want to start out in doom tower just against a regular doom tower normal floor here uh, just so I want to show you how he works keep in mind he does have that aura attack in all battles by 33% so a really really strong attack aura for all battles does work 
work, of course, in Doom Tower. Uh, so we're going to use him here. Ignore the rest of this pay to win team, guys. It's all about Nogdar. He's the fastest champion out of these five. So he'll be going first and his turn meter is going to be almost constantly full. So I'm going to go down to one time speed and we can just watch. Keep an eye on Nogdar, the star of the show in the center. And let's go ahead and just put it on auto. Gorefeast is his A2. He almost kills everybody. He sacrifices HP and he's already back at full turn meter. So it wasn't really necessary there. Don't worry, we'll show him in, in more difficult areas of the game as well. But he kills somebody, so he grants an immediate extra turn. He kills somebody with that hard-hitting A1. He grants a... He dies because of the self-sacrifice, and he's already back at a full turn meter again because he self-revived and sacrificed more or lost, excuse me, more HP. So even when he revives, he's coming back with more HP. He goes into the A3. He's already at full turn meter yet again. Let me speed this up for you guys. Two times speed. Trunda goes, boom. He kills somebody, extra turn. Goes in with the A2. He dies. He comes back alive. You saw when he came back alive. It was full turn meter, not half turn meter, because he'd lost that HP. The frenzy set still gives him credit for losing that HP, so he comes back with a full turn meter instead. That's insane. So he put out 450k damage on this team of insane nukers because, well, he was fastest and he hogged the uh, he hogged the turn. He hogged the turn meter. All right, so I just loaded the team up with a bunch of uh, support in reviving champions and Nogdar the Headhunter and Thylesia, who. I still absolutely love. I did a guide on her last week, and man, I ended up keeping my hands on Thylesia and on Dementia uh, because I just, these epics are really, really good. Like, some of the better epics in the game in terms of what they do, they do it really well. Dementia. Block damage, support champion, and of course, uh, Thylesia just doing a ton of damage, man. She's a damage dealing machine. So I have three revivers on this team Ryan the Conjurer, Godseeker Aniri, and Arbiter. I don't have a ton of heals on the team, though. I do have a lot of revives. Self-reviving, I guess, four revivers because we get the self-revival on Nogdar, but not if he dies right now. We need somebody to pick up uh, Thylesia. Uh-oh. It's okay. We have three revivers, Ash. What are you worried about, bro? We're good. We're, we're fine. And these mobs, they hit very hard. This is a level 25 dungeon. They hit very hard. They have a ton of HP and uh, a ton of defense as well, right? Uh, but we're seeing his A1, 50, 60K or so. That's a hard-hitting A1 as well. A decently hard-hitting A2. Now we're going to move on to round two. I'm really curious to compare his damage to Thylesia at the end of this battle. So what I'll probably do here is you guys kind of get the point. I do want to watch the second wave. We're going to jump into the arena real quick after this as well. But I do want to finish this battle just to compare damage. 73k HP goes right into his A3. Full turn meter goes right into his A2. He's full turn meter again. Unfortunately, Thylesia keeps dying, blocking his self-revival. But again, that's the good part of having three revivers on the squad here. So let's see if we can break through this second wave. Again, light on the heels. Heavy on the revives, a fun team using champions that I don't use that often here. So now he's revived with a full turn meter, resets the cooldown of all of his skills. He goes in with his A3 last rights. I might even turn that A3 off. I don't know. It's not a very powerful ability. It's not dealing a lot of damage. It's one target, right? But still, it does fill up his turn meter and keep everything kind of moving in that regard as well. So he's going to sacrifice 50% HP on his next move, I think. Let's see. Nope. That's his A1. 57k. Ooh, who's going to have more damage, guys? Thylesia or Nogdar? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Extra turn on that A1 as well. Very helpful. Especially if you're not going against level 25 dungeons where you're not actually, you know, killing most mobs on their last hit. But still, with a full turn meter, man, he's killing a lot more mobs with his A1 than you might expect. So I'm going to cut through the dragon here, guys. You guys get the point here. I just want to compare the damage, so I will be right back. All right, guys, the moment of truth. Here we go. Boom, the final blow, and Thylesia, 2 million damage, Nogdar the Headhunter, drum roll please! 3.4 million, and Thylesia is a beast, man. That's a lot of damage without Warmaster as well on the A1. Helps out Helm Smasher against the waves, but not against the dragon. Uh, let's go ahead and sell that and go over to the arena. What a combo, man. This is fun, dude. 
This is fun. That's all I care about is having fun. So we put this team together here, guys. A bunch of pay-to-win arena uh, champions. The idea here is we keep him alive. And that's all that matters. We have an ally attack on the same team as well. We have a revival, a shield, a shield set, a, you know, with a bunch of buffs. This is going to be fun. I wonder, this is good, like an un, a true unkillable team here, right? Let's take a look. Because, sure, I mean, I guess the only thing that could ruin my dreams here is a Madam Ceres. But he's not even going to die, you know? And... He's going to be losing a lot of HP. He's going to die because he's sacrificing a lot of HP himself, right? That's just going to lead to more turns and a higher turn meter. And then when he does die, he comes right back alive and he goes again, right? And look at this. I mean, he's staying alive pretty well here against uh, eating those hits from, uh, from uh, what's his face? From Rotos like it was nothing. All right. So the enemy team almost dead here. Just going to get rid of stupid Skull Crusher. There we go. All right, so man, this is kind of a nasty team, isn't it? Let's try to find a more challenging team to go against here. Let's go against this like the speed team with Madam Ceres. I think this will be the only team that could beat me, really. They're gonna be super fast because they had the best speed lead aura in the game in Lord Shazar. They have Madam Ceres is gonna strip away all of my buffs. I don't have high resist or anything like that. I have no CC for Ceres. Let's go in anyway. I think this will be the only team that can kill a team like this. Uh, but let's just do it for anyway, right? All right. They won't be able to remove my ally protection, but everything else they'll just strip away and replace with uh, decrease attack, decrease defense. We do stay alive. That's the good, oh, the bombs. But you know, he dies and he comes right back to life. The only problem is we're gonna lose everybody else to the bombs, right? Actually, Duchess will pick everybody else back up. He goes in with A2, he dies. Duchess, revive now, please. Ooh, Swift Parry does proc. Revival's gonna come down any time now. There we go. I was worried about that fear, true fear. So we have a, a shot here, but I don't think it's gonna work out. Okay, so we have fear on Nogdar. 50-50 chance at losing turn. Same thing with uh, with Krisk. He removes his uh, removes the fear from himself. We do have that equalization of HP. He's back to full turn meter because of the, uh, the frenzy. Let's see, he goes in A1. Wasn't able to take down Duchess there, unfortunately. Uh, so let's see. He needs, okay, we do kill the Reviver. Okay, we kill another one. Wait, a, no, he's down, and we have bombs on Necret. Ooh, we came close, but to be fair, this is an endgame team, and what we think is pretty much the only team that could beat a team like this. Madam Ceres is the key to victory here. Let's go against this team here. We have another Necret, a Raglan. Uh, we have the Block Revive and Nithwi Blood Twin and Torment. So again, if there's going to be any team, it might be the block revival uh, of Anithwi, right? That we have to be careful of here. The good news is, is he won't be able to one-shot him, not with all these buffs up right now, and the, the ally protect. So let's see. He goes after Duchess. That was uh, ally protect. We go in with the A2. That's the, uh, okay, that was just a, a retribution proc. That's the A3 of Anithwi Blood Twin. Not too scary. Gonna go after Raglan first, that makes sense. She is the only reviver on the enemy team. Oh, this is gonna be easy, man. And he's got, he's already has full turn meter, he's already ready to go again. The only problem with a team like this is it's not super fast, right? It's not very efficient with our time. But because of the ally protect or the block debuffs uh, from Necret, we're never gonna get frozen. We're never gonna have to worry about Hegemons or Tormans or anything like that. It's a pretty robust team in terms of what it's able to contend with. You just wouldn't be able to push with it like at the end of the season because uh, it's not very fast. So let's just go against one more team here. Let's go against this. Uh, oh, it's another Madam Ceres team. That team did look easier. Can we get our revenge against another Madam Ceres team, guys? What do you think? Probably. We'll see. We'll see. Like, that's the only champion I should be avoiding with a team like this. Plus, they have a lot of, uh... I've got a lot of... I have a lot of stuff going on here on this squad. But we'll contend with them one at a time, right? And again, it won't be a super fast battle, but... that See that last right's ability? See Roshkard, uh, the tower's health on the enemy team? That was his A3. That was his A3 ability. So he took him all the way down, then he comes back in, tries to kill him. The only problem is he has blocked damage up. So that's not going to work, is it? But a team like this, unless we went first 
before this team, it's going to be a long time beating a team like this no matter what anyway. Between the block damage, the unkillable, and all the shield synergy of Brogni, I think we will be able to beat this team though. We should be able to, right? They don't even have a reviver. Yeah, it's just going to take a little bit of time, but we should be fine. So guys, let's go ahead and just start wrapping the video as we watch the conclusion of this match. I don't know about you guys, but these videos are so much fun. As I said earlier, I hope you enjoyed them as well. Uh, we're still going to lie. We're, we have the, the Reductress Revival. So even though things looked a little sketchy there, it wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, so we go in. We're trying to finish the job. Unkillable does proc. Last rights. Exchanging HP. That takes Brogni all the way back down to, to nil. That's going to be GG's. Guys, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. Let me know if you enjoyed a video like this. We will have uh, the Ayumi Love stats guy for Naga. Uh, Scott says, blah, 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 blah. Stats guide for Nogdar the Headhunter in the description below as well. Thank you. Have a great day. And as always, take care, guys.